Hello everyone, welcome to another webinar of Ober. My name is Wouter Helsloot and uh, I'm a, a special interest group leader for uh, GD Edwards in the Benelux. Uh, today we have um, Russell Steiner with us and he's from uh, Manage IT um, and he will um, um, present us a tool for uh, data management. Russell, are you in the call? I am. Okay, can I give you control? Yeah, sure, no problem. You are the host now and um, good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, so can you see my screen okay? Yes. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks very much, um, everybody, for uh, coming along today, and thank you very much to the um, to the Obug Group uh, and uh, Hearing and Wouter for uh, letting me present today. Um, and today uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, the Manage It product from Click IT, and uh, Manage It is a suite of data management tools for JD Edwards Enterprise One uh, from. The nine, uh, for the nines. So um, we'll be looking at our 9.2 system today, but if you're on 9.0, 9.1 or 9.2, what you see is what you get. So uh, we're covered all the way back to 9.0 uh, if, you, uh, if you're still on that release. Um, a quick introduction for me. Hello, this is me. Um, uh, I'm head of sales at Click IT. Uh, I've been head of sales for about three years now. Uh, our previous head of sales retired and I was doing all the pre-sales technical uh, work, the demonstrations for Purge It and Manage It, uh, data analyses and answering all the tricky questions for him. Um, so it's just a natural progression really for me to move into the, uh, into the head of sales role. Um, I've been working with JD Edwards hands-on for over 20 years now and uh, with Click IT for nearly 13 years now uh, when, when January comes along. Um, most of the time working with the, the Purge It products, uh, the purging and archiving solution from Click IT, um, but also um, doing some normal JD Edwards consultancy as well. And uh, more recently in the last couple of years, uh, working with the Manage It product. So Manage It is, um, is made up of um, three different uh, module areas. And uh, normally this presentation will, that we do for um, end users um, in a uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one uh, demonstration normally lasts for about 90 minutes. So I'm going to be um, giving you the, the short version, the the, um, the summary version. Um, so if I don't go into too much detail on some of the screens, uh, please forgive me for that. But we can pick that up in a personal demonstration with yourself as well. So the um, the three main areas of uh, manage it are um, analytic dashboards, um, test it, which is a way to um, subset the data that you are copying back to your test environments. So rather than for doing full uh, refreshes from production all the time, then you can do subsets of data uh, just for your specific needs. Um, and also there's a data mask element as well to provide um, data privacy um, GD, G, uh, to satisfy things like GDPR, but also internal operational procedures as well. So if we take a look at the um, analytics dashboards to start with, um, if you think about your JD Edwards system, um, and remember, um, Manage It is JD Edwards specific. It's it's for JD Edwards 9.0, 9.1, and 9.2. So if we if we think about the JD Edwards system, we have a development environment which is made up of control tables and business data. Um, you then have a prototype environment. You may have some other environments like training, um, and they're all non-prod environments. And then you have your production environments um, as well. And um, normally, if you want to find out uh, sort of sizing information about the database, you go to the, the DBA or the CNC and say, how, you know, how big is my database? Uh, how much disk space have we got? What's our free space? Uh, things like that. So you can find out the information at, at, at the big picture level, but you don't know about the, the granularity of it and how it's growing um, over, over the course of time. Now, we, we know about the benefits of archiving the data where we can take a big chunk of the data out and put it into a separate archive location. So then when we do data refreshes, we're actually uh, minimizing the amount of data we're actually refreshing to the other environments. But how do we know whether we need to do that uh, as well? 
So um, we might know the overall size uh, by going to the CNCs or the DBAs, but do we know the individual sizes of the, of, of the tables or the database data sources themselves? Um, what about the record counts per table and also across the whole system as well? well what's the, the distribution of that data? And uh, what about the growth over time? We may be able to look at it as a snapshot, but what was it a week ago or two years ago or five years ago um, and how is it be, how's it growing and what's it going to be growing like in in the future um, do are we are we monitoring these things um, and uh, oh, hang on sorry just admitting somebody into the room um, admit Sorry. So, um, uh, are we monitoring the um, the database the database over, over that course of time, or are we just looking at things when somebody asks us about it? Um, if there are particular growths in database data sources or tables, do we get alerted about that information? And what's our overall sort of management strategy for the JD Edwards data? Are we just looking at disk usage at the moment? And could it be a bit more proactive than that? Um, and as I mentioned before, when do we need to, to purge an archive as well? So the analytic dashboards within uh, Manage It help you to address those all, all of those questions and all of those points. So there are three different dashboards uh, within Manage It at the moment. Um, two which look at the um, the sizing from a technical and a functional perspective, and then the a new dashboard in the latest release of uh, manage it, which helps you to analyze your work with submitted jobs uh, that have been submitted in the past. So if we do, if I just give you a summary of these dashboards and then I'll go into the product and show you each of those dashboards as well. So the technical dashboard allows us to um, have um, alerts on the side of our screen. Uh, we have um, some summary information about the environments or the database data sources that we're that we're looking at or that we've said that we want to look at so we don't have to monitor everything just the the biggest ones um, we can look at the, um, the the historical growth and the pre predicted forecast of those environments and database data sources as well and then depending on which ones we've got selected in those uh, in that top box it would then give us information on the right hand side about the individual tables within those environments and database data sources so then we can start looking at individual sizes of tables and record counts within the tables as well. There's also some other context sensitive information in here as well. So in the alerts, um, as well as looking at um, the sizes and setting up alerts for sizes and record counts for tables, we can also have alerts about technical problems like um, are there columns missing in a table? Are there indexes missing in a table as well? So we'll look about uh, it uh, when we get into the product in a minute. So that's the technical dashboard. But, um, and, and this is probably useful for, for a CNC or a DBA perspective, but maybe a business analyst doesn't need this level of technical detail. Maybe they want something else. So we've got a functional dashboard. And in this way, we can uh, pick an environment uh, that we're interested in. Within an environment, we can then look at the modules in that environment based on the system codes uh, within JD Edwards, and then also the sub modules within those modules as well. So we um, we can identify that um, uh, 09 for general ledger is part of the financials module, for example. Now we can drill down into this information and then when we select a module or a sub module over on the right hand side, we can then see the information about the tables again. So the, um, uh, the individual tables, uh, record counts, um, sizes, uh, and, and also we can sequence by uh, the size or even the record counts as well, because sometimes you may have a big physical table, but it's got few records in and also vice versa. So lots of records, but actual physical size isn't huge. And then uh, at the bottom of that screen, we can then see um, some information about the growth and the forecast of the individual tables we've got selected there as well. So that's a, a more functional dashboard. And then um, and you sort of drill down in this uh, sort of method to, to get further information. And then in the latest release of uh, Manage It, we've then got our work with submitted jobs analysis dashboard. So we can look at work with submitted jobs across all servers that you've got in the, um, in the system, um, or you can look at individual servers 
Um, at the top area, we've got some information about um, are we looking at just the last week's worth of data, the last month, the last year, or for all time, for example. And what's important to us? Are we looking at uh, the longest run times of jobs or what the shortest jobs are, um, the, the jobs that have been run the most frequently, you know, how many jobs have been run, uh, and so on. Now, with uh, when we select and, and sort, uh, we'll um, we've got a big picture sort of static graph on the side, which shows us uh, which are the biggest jobs in the system. Um, but the selection and sorting also applies to the main result set here, which is effectively this particular batch and version has been run this many times, and its average runtime is this, uh, and so on. Uh, if you select um, any one of the records within the main grid there, we'll then see detailed information about that particular job. So again, we'll see that in the, in the software in a minute. Okay, so um, let's hop over there. And um, as I said, we're going to sign into uh, 9.2, but uh, the same applies to 9.1 and 9.0 as well. Um, so let's just make this a bit bigger. Um, now with uh, Purge, our other product, we have a, a, a menu structure that um, ships into the JD Edwards uh, system. But with Manage It, we decided to do, do it a little bit differently. And we just have one application which you can then uh, create a task against and then put that task on your um, on your relevant uh, menus. Um, so on the front uh, screen here, we then have um, some dashboard information uh, um, on the basis of green is good and red is bad. So if we wanted to look into particular uh, things about manage it or about test it, we can click on these pie charts and it would take us to the relevant dashboard. For future releases, we'll also have separate um, uh, dash, uh, dashboard entries as well, and, and this will grow over time as Manage It uh, becomes even more mature. Um, but if we look into Manage It for starters, um, there's some information over on the side here where, about where we, uh, sorry, configure the routines. Uh, that's at the top there. Also, one important thing there is how we link database data sources to environments. So if we if we're looking at production, we want to be looking at business data prod and control tables prod. We don't want to be incorporating business, business data test in the production environment. So if we select an environment, we know what database data sources make that up. And there's also a couple of batch jobs down here where we run the stats for the first two dashboards and also for the third one uh, as well. So there's our three dashboards. If we go into the environment dashboard, this is the technical one that I was uh, mentioning about. And if I just pop back to um, a, a, another date there, uh, we can see some information here that we're looking by environment, uh, looking at DV in this case, because we signed into DV and this is JD Edwards demo uh, data. Um, but we can see that um, because this is at the top of the graph, DV is also selected over on the table listing side over here. We can see the growth of the um, the system or for that particular environment uh, over time. And in the detail section with the tables, because we're sorted by database size, um, the grid is sequenced by uh, these columns over here, the size and the size percentage. So we can see media objects is, is pretty big. Um, but if you see there that F98 table there is uh, only got 0.9% 0.09% of the records. So if we sorted by number of records, that would drop off the list and it would be way down there. Um, now we can also look at by database data source. Uh, and if we flick that, um, then we can see our database data sources uh, here. Now I mentioned we could set up uh, alerts for size and those alerts are also seen as, as dotted lines there. So we've actually exceeded the alerts on business data test and control tables test. Uh, and we can see those alerts have been highlighted over on that side there. We can also alert for individual tables. So if we pick on FO101, for example, the, uh, the tabs reposition over here, and we can see that the address book has grown significantly over what our particular alert was. So maybe we said, you know, we don't want any, um, any kind of major or exponential growth on this particular table. So then we can look into that table and find out what the problem was. 
The alert settings are set up in a different program, but you can set things up by, by database data source, as you can see here, um, or by, by individual table. And with individual tables, you can look at sizes and record counts as well. So if anything breaches those sizes or those uh, record counts, then they would appear in the alerts over on the side down here. Um, now, if, we, if I just change to a different uh, snapshot date there, uh, we can see that we've got a, a bunch of uh, alerts over here based on um, the comparing tables versus specs. So in archive data test, if I select FO901, um, it says that there should be 15 indexes in the account master. There's only 10 in the physical table in the database and that these five indexes don't in the specs don't match the table. So maybe somebody's created some additional indexes, they've promoted the object to, to, um, to the next environment, um, but then they've forgotten to recreate the indexes. So that will show you that kind of uh, error. Um, the, uh, if we pick on FO101Z2 there, for example, um, there's one index in the spec, but nothing on the table. So maybe um, the, the whole set of indexes has been dropped for that particular table, um, and hopefully not for the whole database. Uh, so it gives us the, the relevant comment there as well. And then if we pick on that table uh, as another example, um, it's not got any indexes uh, in either in the specs or the tables, but it's showing us that there are four columns that are in the specs, but aren't found in the table. So again, change control process, uh, modified table moving up to another environment. Somebody's not regenerated and then repopulated the table correctly. So that's, so that's some, some really uh, useful um, um, analytics there um, as well. So that's the technical dashboard. If we come, come out and we take a look at the functional dashboard, um, this is more from, from a BA perspective, they, they'd be interested in this, or maybe even uh, management as, as well. So we can see, uh, we can select an environment uh, up here. Uh, again, we've got snapshot dates, we can look back in, in particular times if we want to, and sequence things in the grid by size or by number of records as well. Um, but let's say we picked on financials, we'd see the sub module would then change. Uh, AR being first in the list is selected, and then we can see our accounts receivable tables over here. But if we were looking uh, and we saw, oh, GL is quite big. Um, we can also see that in the pie chart as well. You can just click on the pie chart and then it would reposition over here. So we can see in the description here, we're in DV920 for financials and for general accounting for the snapshot date of that particular date. So that's all the information that we can see over over on this side. Um, again, uh, FO911 is going to be one of the biggest tables in the system. Um, but if we look down here at uh, batch control records, for example, it's it's low down in, in terms of size, 0.6 of a percent, but in terms of number of records, it's a bit bigger. So if we flicked and looked at by number of records, that table would jump up and it would be higher up in the list. Now, size is normally important from an IT perspective number of records important from a business perspective because batch programs and interactive programs process things record by record so we can um, you know look at different cuts of the data as necessary you can also look at um, the historical trend of the uh, of the, um, the growth of the tables as well and also the forecasted growth uh, as well over different particular time periods so again we're just uh, it's just showing me there a, a general ledger in dv in business data test. So that's the two um, analytic uh, dashboards. Um, I forgot to mention, we are recording this session, by the way. So if you wanted to watch back at it, um, the OBUG team will be um, putting this up on their YouTube channel um, in the future so that you can go back and just have a look at some of that information in a bit more detail if I whiz through it a bit quickly. Um, and then the third dashboard that we were talking about is our new job performance analyzer. Now, um, if we look into this one, let's just zoom in a little bit there so that we can, oh, maybe a little bit too much there. Um, now, just a, um, a, a word of um, sort of configuration here. We're running in a JD Edwards demo environment, and this is where we do all of our, our project testing. So all of these jobs that you see here are project jobs, but um, in your system, then you'd see all of your normal jobs. It's gathering all of the information from work with submitted jobs. So if you were, uh, printing invoices or posting 
um, general ledger batches or running data integrity reports. All of that information would be seen in, in, the, in the UBEs here, but um, just for our demo data here, we can see project jobs. Now, to, um, to go through the, uh, the, the five different sections of the screen again, so we can select um, either an individual server or, or all enterprise servers. So if you've got multiple enterprise or logic servers, we can look at all of those. Um, this is a, a sort of semi-static snapshot of which are the biggest uh, running jobs uh, within uh, the system. And then in the top section here, we've got our, our selection uh, areas. So how do we want to select it over time? Are we looking at uh, the big picture or have we had a particular problem in the last week? Um, and then once we have that, um, are we looking at uh, what's the longest time that the jobs have been running or the total, total number of times that things have been run uh, and so on? Now we can see quite a bit of information in the grid there. If we didn't want that information, we could say, let's take off the object description. Uh, we could take off the version title. We could also say, we don't want it broken down by job queue and version. So let's take that off as well and then look at all job queues and all versions all rolled into one. Now we might want to look at individual job queue because job queues might be on different servers and they might be there might be a problem with a particular server. So um, so that's why that capability is there. But if we were um, looking at this, so we're looking at all time um, and the um, the we're sorted by the total runtime. So which one job has run for the most time over all time? And it's saying it's in this environment and it's that job. It's run for a total of four and a half thousand minutes. Um, the number of times it's run is 213 uh, and the longest time that it's run for is 50 uh, minutes. Now we can, if, if those metrics aren't the kind of things that we're looking for, maybe we're looking for the number of times that, it, that a job is run, uh, it actually turns out it's the same one. But um, you can see that this then sequences by the number of times run. If we look by what's the longest running job, uh, this one here ran for three hours. Um, okay, let's drill down into that in a bit more detail. Now this information that we see here in the grid is then um, shown in detail in the tabbed area at the bottom. So if we're looking at that one job at the top there and it's run um, total times run 33 times, if we looked at the last tab here, then you'd see here's all of those 33 jobs that you can then drill into and have a look at. On the front, uh, front tab there, uh, we're looking at uh, those different metrics across those different time periods. So if, if the jobs were run in, um, you know, if it was changing over time, then we'd be able to see that information within the grid there. Um, you can also look at by user as well. So if, there's a, if there are particular problem um, versions that are run by particular users, um, then maybe maybe the the the, um, the run the runs for a particular user show up as a bit of a problem. Um, so again, we can look at uh, information by this year, the last thirty days, the last seven days, and so on. We can go, oh look, uh, Andy's got a problem here um, uh, on this particular job. Or if we look at a different job, then oh, it's the JD user, or uh, it's Robin in this case, uh, and so on. Uh, we can see the information over time as well. So we've graphed, graphed this, and again, if we change to different rows here, we can see that information is shown uh, across time for the different jobs. Um, and, and if that looks a bit too busy, you can turn some of the things off here. So um, you know, you can turn these off until you get to a particular, particular snapshot that you're interested in, and you're saying, okay, this job in this in um, in, in this environment uh, in all uh, job queues, uh, it's a bit up and down. Uh, maybe we can identify it and say, oh yeah, that's actually month end uh, period. So this particular job is running longer at month end. Why is that? Okay, let's drill down into that and find the performance problems. So that's the um, the new dashboard that we've got here um, within version 1.03 of Manage It. You can also subset that uh, that information by um, by the statistics that we've got there as well. So if we pop back to the uh, the PowerPoint then, um, just checking on time, okay. 
So uh, we'll uh, take a look at uh, a little bit of a look at test it now as well. And when we get into the programs, again, it will be a little bit um, higher level uh, in in the programs. But I'll try and um, you know give you the uh, the whole the whole flavour of the tested module uh, within this demonstration. So if we remember back to our environments and uh, we have our production and our non-production environments, as production grows, then normally when we do a data refresh, we would completely drop the business data database within the non-prod environment and then completely refresh it with whatever's in production, which is great for data integrity. But the thing is, if you do that in all environments, then whatever it is that you're creating in production is also replicated across all of the other environments as well. So PD growth equals three or more times growth in all the non-prod environments. Um, it also affects uh, backup tapes, um, high, avail uh, high availability nodes or online disaster recovery replication. Um, the operations to perform those refreshes virtually always have to be carried out by a CNC or a DBA because it involves operating at the database object level and dropping tables and dropping databases and re renaming or repermissioning um, tables and databases as well. So it takes quite a while to perform. Also, the frequency of when you can perform it tends to take a while as well. So if somebody says, I want some data refreshed into a PY environment, and five other people are testing in that environment at the same time, then you've got to get consensus by all of them to say, yes, OK, we're OK with a data refresh before you can refresh any of that data. So it might be you know, three weeks or more before you can actually do that refresh. It also destroys any previous testing that people have done in those test environments as well, um, it, especially for those other five people. Um, and, and, if, and it's effectively a one size fits all uh, scenario. But, it, but, the, but the, uh, the fit is actually, um, yes, we're going to trash all of your testing data uh, and just reset it to whatever's in production. So it's not really a fit at all. It does refresh the whole database um, and it does refresh whole tables, which um, you know, can benefit from a, a full data integrity perspective. But full data integrity isn't uh, you know, 100% of the, uh, of the requirements. When you're putting test data back into the test environments, you really want some relevant data in there in a timely fashion so that you can perform your tests. So again, the test it product uh, addresses all of these, uh, these points. The way it does that is that um, we gradually build up the, um, the uh, sets or subsets of data that we want to refresh into the environment. And we start down at the individual table level and we can subset the data within tables. So instead of taking all of the data from that particular table, we can say only take this year's data within that table. And we can do that with just normal data selection. So we can sub subset it by tables and within the tables with uh, data selection. We can also maintain data integrity between tables as well. So where we refresh the purchase order header, um, we only want to refresh the purchase order details that relate to the headers that we've just refreshed. So there's no point taking all of the details when we've only got some of the headers down, down in the test environments. So we maintain the data integrity to just um, refresh the bits of data that we need to. And we do that by facilitating the joins between the two tables. So we say, we've refreshed these headers and the primary key is order number, order company, order type. Let's join back to the detail tables and only refresh those detail tables where they've got the same primary key information. When we do refreshes, we've got different actions that we can perform on those tables as well. So we can just clear a table maybe it's a work file and we don't want any records in that work file in the test environment anymore. So we could just clear it. We could replace the data that's in there with whatever it is we're copying from production. So clear the table in the test environment and then copy back a subset of the data from production, um, which also includes those joins uh, as well. We can add to the data. So maybe, maybe the data that's in there is all, already okay but we've, uh, the last time we did the refresh was six months ago. Let's add the last six months of data into the test environment. So we don't have to drop 15 years worth of data and then refresh that same 15 years worth of data again. We just append the new six months 
of data into there. Uh, and again, we can uh, do that using joins as well. There's also an action which is no action. And that is so that we can specifically say in our definition, yes, we've considered this table, but we don't want to do anything with it. So if somebody else comes to look at the configuration, they can say, oh yeah, okay, they've thought about that. They don't need it, that's fine. Rather than saying, hmm, I wonder why they didn't include this table. So the individual tables that we define, we can then move into groups. Uh, and, a, and a table group is effectively a set of tables that we want to refresh together, like purchase order header, purchase order detail, ledger, receipts, price, price adjustments, order approvals, addresses, and so on. So a table can exist within one table group, and many tables can exist within one table group as well. But those definitions for tables, you know, they're just J.D. Edwards tables, so they can actually exist in multiple table groups if we want to. So there's lots of flexibility about how you configure um, test it. The table groups then get rolled into what we call definitions. And the de definitions is where we say where we're, our, we're copying from, business data prod, and where we're copying to, business data test or business data CRP, for example. Um, it also gives us some, some other choices on the table group. So do we just select the table groups that we've listed within this definition, or do we want to consider all other tables in the environment as well? So maybe our table groups subset the really big tables, and then all of the other tables are so small that we just do a full refresh on those tables. That's fine as well. You can also apply data selection at the definition level as well. So if you only want to refresh company 100, then you can apply that at the definition level and then tick it on within each of the tables that are selected within that definition as well. Um, so we don't have to apply a, an individual line of company level data selection uh, in each of those tables. So that's really useful as well. Uh, so we can decide which tables it applies to and which ones it doesn't. Uh, definitions is also the level at which we run at um, and uh, it, again table groups you can have many table groups in a definition you can have many different definitions and you can have uh, a table group can exist within many definitions as well and then when you run the definitions you get um, a sequential numbering of uh, of the auditing um, so it's fully audited just like the the project product is as well so just to put some numbers in there, some examples. So from the table perspective, we could do some purchasing. We can say where the transaction date is greater than the 1st of January this year. So we only copy down this year's worth of data because that's the, the relevant data, the open data, things that you know how they've been set up and what they've been used like. Um, so just select this year's worth of data. Then for all of the details, we can then say, only select those detail records where the head has been copied back. Table groups, just give you some examples, purchasing and sales. So you could do groups by module. You could be doing groups by person if they're refreshing, uh, if they're working on particular things um, and also by particular project as well. So maybe you've got a BI project that's going in and you need um, 17 different tables from different areas that five different people are working on. So you could group it up as a, as a project. Um, also, you can use it for help desk calls. If uh, you've got a particular problem in prod, you want to try that fix in the test environment, but the data has not been generated in the test environment yet. Let's just copy that, you know, those few records from those few tables back to the test environment, try our fix in test before we then apply it to production. Normally we'd have to break out SQL or go to the DBA and say, oh, can you copy this down? You know, and that can take time. You can set all of this up interactively within the JD Edwards interface and then immediately run it as well. So it's very quick to, to respond to. Um, definitions can then take you to a higher level. Uh, you can either keep sort of one for one on the modules. You can roll it up to, um, to sort of a, you know, a bigger module level. Uh, you could say, let's do a, a, an all project refresh or an, a whole environment refresh, but only a subset of the data. Um, and then every time that you run the job, you get a unique number as well. So let's just have a quick look at these. Um, and I'll, as I said, I won't go into this in too much detail. Um, hopefully I haven't signed out. Yeah, that's good. So um, I've gone into test it here. 
and there's um, there's a little bit of uh, setup here, which means uh, primarily you can put in here the places that you want to be able to copy to. So you don't want to copy to business data prod. So you don't put that in there. You say, I want to be able to co copy to business data test, business data CRP, and so on. Um, there's the uh, the actual data copy run program over on that side. Um, and then we're going to look in, into very briefly into these two dashboards here. So if we look into test it definition setup, let's pick Mike's demo here. So uh, Mike's demo, uh, he wants to copy from business data prod to business data test. Uh, he's got three table groups within it with a total of 23 different tables. He's also got some definition level data selection set up as well. Now what table groups and what tables are there? Let's click on this tab down here. We can then see he's got uh, some of our Z uh, table groups that we ship with the product. So we've got accounts payable, uh, purchasing, and GL. So he's doing a, a procure to pay refresh into the test environment. Um, those three table groups are defined over on the side here with the uh, tested table groups. And uh, if we look in here, so we've got ZJD purchasing, the 16 tables that are that are defined over here. Let's just have a look into that in a bit more detail and maybe we need to change things a little bit. Oh, I've zoomed in a bit too much because you didn't see the button on the side there. So um, if we click that uh, table group tables, this is going to take us into those uh, into that table group where we can see these 16 tables. Now um, we're in purchasing. So the primary thing that we want to refresh is the purchase order header. And uh, what we said in here is we've got some different action codes that we can apply, but this one says copy and replace. So remove all of the records in the destination that we're going to refresh this to, which I think from the, the previous screen was business data test. So clear out that table and then copy in some data from business data prod. What data is it that we want to copy in? Well, let's put some data selection in. So if we take the row exit to selection criteria, we can then see in here, we've got where transaction date is greater than this particular date here. So we're actually taking back um, 2019 and 2020 data. The only columns that would, have, would, that would show in, in the data selection would be the columns for the particular table that you're looking at. Because this is JD Edwards and you know, we, we know what we're doing with JD Edwards, we can get the, the specs from, um, from the, from the uh, the spec tables so it's only showing you the available columns and then depending on which column you pick it would then say oh that's a date so let's open up the date field um, so it's just like normal data selection it's just it's just within a grid and uh, so it's all point and click with uh, standard JD Edwards functionality so if you know how to use JD Edwards you pretty much know how to use manage it so we've we've copied across some headers there um, and then let's say we want to copy across some details. Now, remember we said about joins, here's a join replace. So let's clear down the F4006 in the test environment and then only refresh the information where we're joining to the F4301, i.e. the table that we've just copied the headers down from. How do we know what tables or what columns they link on? Well, we've specified some join criteria over here as well. Um, so that this is where we get the, the column to column mapping. So um, that, that's uh, really simple and straightforward to, to build up. Uh, we've then got a table group and that table group has then been uh, incorporated into this, uh, in, into this definition here. Now, when you run the jobs, uh, let's just close out from that. So you can you can create as many definitions as you want to and as many table groups as you want to. You know, it's just JD Edwards. So you can do whatever you want to in it, really. Um, but then once you've when you run those jobs, you can then go into tested definition runs here and you can see the uh, the the the. Um, uh, the jobs that you've that you've run. So if we go to Mike's demo here, uh, it was session number 20 or run number 20. It's gone from uh, business data test to another data source there. Um, we had some data selection on it. Uh, it was running update mode. Uh, what's the status? It's ended. Um, did it need to create any additional tables? No. Uh, who ran it? What day? What time? Etc. 
you can also look down into here and you can see the detail about all of the tables that have been refreshed as well. So we could see um, F4209, there were 64 records copied. F4211 was actually copied with a join replace to the, to the header table joining on these columns and it, reflect, um, it copied down 708 records. Now, if, we, if we're not interested in that join information, we can just take that off there and it's uh, you know, a bit, bit less cluttered in there. So we can still see that 4211 and it's 708 records there as well. You can also see over on the side here uh, what data selection was applied to each individual table. So if we change between the tables, you see the data selection changes. And if some of them haven't got any data selection, then there's some, some of that definition level data selection that I said, where we said, okay, we want where the company is equal to 200 and the transaction date's greater than this date. Um, and we don't want address book number 1000 for whatever reason. Um, and that would apply to all of the relevant tables that we've, that we've set up to, to have that, that definition level data selection. Now, all, all of that, as you can see, it's all built within the JD Edwards tool set. Um, the, um, the test it data copy run, that's a batch job. So you just run it like any other batch job uh, as well. Um, so it's again, all very familiar um, interface, um, same pane of glass, you're still signed into the same environment. Um, and um, yeah, it's just, just like Project, very easy to use. Now the, um, the third uh, part of uh, Manage It is Data Mask. Now, if I just maximize that again, and Data Mask is there to, um, to uh, sort of comply with data privacy legislation, legislation like GDPR, um, but also um, any company policies and just any best practices really. Um, for example, if you've got a lot of third party contractors working in the development and test environments, then maybe you don't want to be able to see things like addresses or salaries or bank account numbers or sorry, you don't want them to see all of that information in the test environments. So when you copy the data down with Testit, you can also apply the data mask to the Testit data copies. So uh, the way that we configure it, again, we'll look at it in the system in a second. Um, any table in JD Edwards, any column in any table, you can apply three options. One, you can clear the values in those cells uh, in that particular column. You can set the columns to specific values or you can set them to random values as well. You can either run it standalone where you say, okay, let's just update whatever's in PY and dev at the moment. We're just gonna run this data mask to clear out any sensitive information. You can run it with the test it data refresh. So you've, you've done that first operation, you've run it standalone, but then when you're copying production data back down again, it would reset it and show you all those live details again. So if we attach the data mask to the test it data refresh, it will mask it, mask the data as it goes down into those non-prod environments. Also, there's a dynamic option as well. So if you spot something in particular and you go, whoa, that shouldn't be there, then you can do this dynamically and just run it uh, interactively and it would uh, fix the data straight away. So very quick uh, demonstration. How are we doing on time? 15 minutes left, that's good. So um, with data mask, uh, as you can see here, we've got a setup. Uh, you can look at the individual runs, um, but the data mask, I don't know if you spotted it before, it, it also popped up as a column in the test it definition runs as well. So if we've applied a data mask to a test it definition, then um, that, would, uh, that would show up on there as well. And also our dynamic data mask as well. Uh, if we were to run it uh, manually, then there's a, there's a test it data mask run uh, job there. So let's have a look at setup. Um, zoom in a bit here. Um, so let's look at demo. That's saying that we've got nine different masks set up there. Row group detail. And um, maybe we're refreshing employee records into the test environment. So we want to uh, randomize the names. So mask type three is randomize. Um, so there's no specific value that we're setting here. We're just saying, let's randomize. Let's replace vowels with vowels and consonants with consonants. So it looks like a name, but it's not really a name. Uh, maybe we're using some user reserve fields as part of a customization. So maybe we'll, we want to set those to a particular thing. 
Um, again, alpha in a different table there, we, we want to randomize that as well. And for address book records, let's just clear those addresses out. We don't want those in there at all. Um, now, maybe we're refreshing this employee data so that we can do some purchase order approval testing. And when we do, when we run through and add those records into the F4209 table, we don't want it sending emails out to everybody and saying, oh, you need to approve this order because it actually it's just an order in the test system. So let's reset the email to, to, to me so that when I'm running the testing, I get all of those emails. So in that, that particular table, all of the email fields would get set to this particular value. So we can uh, take that, that demo data mask group and we can run it interactively. We can see it, um, ooh, that's a bit big. Uh, we can see it in the, uh, in the job uh, run there. That's just like, a, uh, just like that audit screen there. But we can also run things dynamically as well. So uh, let's say we, we spotted a problem and, uh, and we saw some bank account information in there. And we go, oh no, we don't want any bank account information in there because you know, we don't want to accidentally make payments from the test system, or we don't want the contractors to, to see bank account details. Or maybe we've um, seen some salaries in the employee master and we don't want any in there. So let, let's do clear column value. And you'll see this is a, it's a headerless detail screen here. So you can just put in table, column, action, select which data source you want it to apply to, row, run mask. And it would do that interactively. It would, well, interactively here, it would submit the batch job. It would do that, uh, that mask and it would um, apply whatever action it is to whatever column and table that you've applied there. So you can just say, oh, I've got a, an immediate problem. Let's fix it straight away. So um, that's the three um, the three modules of manage it really the analytics the uh, let's get this big again so the analytics the test it and the data mask so with analytics we can better manage our system resources get get advanced warnings of potential problems and also indications of when we need to purge an archive uh, with purge it as well with test it we can reduce the size the cost and the time for data copies so we can just refresh the data that we want to we can do it as a BA as well. We don't have to call on CNCs and DBAs to do this data refresh and we can do it instantly. We can set something up, we can run the batch job to do the data refresh and we can do it you know, within 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, we don't have to wait three weeks to do that refresh, uh, which is really helpful for those help desk calls. So you can increase the frequency, you can increase the specific control of what it is you're actually refreshing and therefore the quality of the data that you've got in the test environment. Um, and as I mentioned, you can run it as, as BAs as, you, as you've seen in the screen. Um, data Mask then provides the protection of personal data. Uh, it reduces your risk of, risk of litigation if somebody, you know, some nefarious act, uh, actors will take that information from your test environments and then go off and do things with it. Uh, you don't want that at all. Um, and it also integrates with that with Tested as well. Now, in terms of pricing, um, this is our 2020 pricing. And we've been told by both customers and partners that this is really cheap <laughs> and that we should be increasing our prices. So um, in the future, we probably will. But at the moment, um, the price per, in, per JD Edwards instance and per year, uh, because manage it's on a subscription basis, is four and a half thousand euros. Um, in year one, you've got about four and a half thousand euros of setup costs as well, which is um, install technical configuration and training. Um, so year one cost would probably be nine thousand. Then year two costs would be that four and a half thousand plus inflation. Now, if we do increase the price in the future, and um, maybe we, we make it ten thousand euros, if you've bought now. Um, the, the year two, year three, year four uh, renewals would still be based on your initial purchase price. They wouldn't be based on the new purchase price. So if you get in early, then you're going to um, stay on a cheap price for uh, for a long time. Um, uh, so if we add add new modules and new functionality, and then we'll you know we'll gradually be increasing this price. And there's more to come as well. So uh, as you've seen, we've, you know, we've added a new dashboard in this release. Uh, we're, we've got new modules in the pipeline for future as well. And if there are particular um, analytics or system admin problems that you guys have got, feel free to send those 
uh, to us as problems and then we can incorporate them as modules within manage it as well so you get all of the benefits of the other modules plus the things that are specific to you as well so i think i've managed to do that in time um, hopefully it was uh, a good presentation for you and uh, gave you some um, some things to think about there if um, anyone's got any questions feel free to um, to fire away that was a great presentation, uh, Russell. I see in the group chat that uh, Ingrid has a question. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we can uh, give Ingrid the, the opportunity to ask it uh, to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Unmute her. Yeah. I just did. Thank you for the presentation. I was wondering, um, you showed in the analysis part, uh, analysis on, for example, the submitted jobs file. Mm. Um, but um, we actually delete the information in our submitted jobs file after, let's say, three months, because otherwise it just grows enormously. Mm. But yeah. how would you be able to get the analysis information then? Yeah, that's a good question, Ingrid. Well, when we run this uh, performance analyzer build here, what we're doing is we're taking a snapshot of that submitted jobs information, but in a summary format, so that then when we look into the analyzer, we're just looking at the specific information that we need from the from the metrics. Um, okay. so, so we've so we've got all of the relevant information, but we've not got it in the same size as where the submitted jobs uh, has. Okay, uh, that sounds good. Thank you. That's right. Uh, Russell, you were uh, showing us that you could uh, link um, the environment to um, data sources. Mm. Um, but there's something that's called uh, uh, OCM mappings. Uh, yeah. why, why is there a different uh, um, application needed for this? Well, the, the OCM mappings just say um, if we signed into a particular environment, then uh, when we're looking at, at a particular table, fetch that table from this particular database data source. But that could be, um, you know, whatever list of database data sources there are. So it could go to business data prod, control tables prod, um, uh, system codes. Uh, you might fetch something from, a, from another data source. Um, rather than going into the OCMs every time and saying um, what, what are all the different combinations of database data sources that, that exist within this particular environment that I'm signed into? Um, what, we've, what we've got is this simple sort of cross-reference here. So we're, we're not doing lots of interactive queries into the, the standard system tables every time that we need to um, show things on the screen, really. And there's also a, a much tighter um, set as well. So if we were just looking at DV there, we've just got three data sources in as opposed to the OCMs, which could have, um, you know, 10 different data sources uh, for different locations of tables, you know, system map, server map, and, and so on. Okay. Just, just helps us to focus uh, a little bit on, on them. And uh, as with all dashboards, you can choose what color things uh, <laughs> show in as well. So, uh, you know, if you, if you want blue for production, fine if you want green or yellow for non-prod or archive then you can do that as well okay let's see if there's a um, there are some more questions from the audience mm -hmm. shall we just um, unmute everyone or Um, if, there, if there aren't any more questions, can I just um, add, thank you very much, everyone, for, um, for for giving us the opportunity to show you manage it as well. I hope it's uh, you know useful, and uh, you, you know you might find some use for it in your organisation as well. Thank you very much, uh, Russell. Um, we uh, we've learned that um, Click IT is not only able to uh, help us with purging, but also with uh, data management. Uh, um, in our systems. So it's uh, uh, good to learn uh, what you have to offer. Thank you. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to um, 
to expand in our product portfolio even more with uh, you know more modules modules in manage it um, as time progresses thank you for your time and uh, see you uh, in the next webinar bye everyone bye thank you